What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. And if I do say so myself, you're looking pretty fantastic today. I don't know if you did something with your hair, maybe a clean shave or, I, I don't know. You look great and I'm super excited for you to be here today. I don't have a race or anywhere I'm gonna shoot this weekend because my wife is graduating and as a husband, I kinda gotta be there. All right, happy wife, happy life. But I did wanna still make a video because I am trying to grow this channel. And I thought it would be really cool to discuss a topic that I get asked all the time. What camera should I buy? Or what's the best lens? Or what are the best settings for my GoPro or my camera or whatever it is? So I thought today we could cover three tips that I wish I knew a lot sooner in my photography journey. Now, I do want to preface this. I am a professional action sports photographer, but I do not consider myself an expert. What? <laughs> The reason I do not consider myself an expert is photography is a form of art. It's super subjective. Everybody has their own style. And as a photographer, you're gonna develop your own style too. But hopefully, these three tips will get you there a little quicker. Tip number one, that is the exposure triangle. The exposure triangle is the absolute fundamentals of photography. You cannot learn anything else until you have learned this one. The exposure triangle is made up of your shutter speed, your ISO, and your aperture. They all determine or affect how much light is coming into the camera. And adjusting one isn't all there is to it. They all have different effects on the photography. So if you have a really fast shutter speed, you're gonna be able to freeze all of that action in one picture. You're gonna be able to see the rocks and the dust flying, or you can run a slower shutter speed and you can do a pan shot where you follow the rider and you get all that nice motion blur. It adds a lot of speed. Now, I will say, pan shots are not easy. They take a lot, a lot of practice. Next up is ISO. ISO, once again, the lower the number, the less light comes in. The higher the number, the more light comes in. Now, you may be thinking, oh, well, I can just raise that as needed. Now, if you raise your ISO too high, you're gonna start introducing grain and make your pictures a little more fuzzy and you're gonna see these little white spots everywhere you go. Last up is aperture. Aperture is one of my favorite things because it leads to what we call bokeh, background separation. So if you are able to get a good lens that you can run an aperture of like an F1.8 to an F2.8, you get that rider in perfect focus and there's plenty of room between him and what's ever behind him, that's how you get that nice detailed rider and all of that nice blurry background that just kind of fades in behind him and makes him super detailed, draws your eyes right to him, right where you want your viewer's eyes to go. So that's about as far as I'm gonna go into the exposure triangle. There is a ton of good content on YouTube or reading online, and I cannot suggest enough to make sure you commit that to memory as much as possible. Understand how each one affects the other and overall, your pictures. Tip number dos. This one's the fun one. This is angles. Angles, angles, angles. Anytime you're taking a picture, whether you're using a professional grade camera, an entry level DSLR, or your phone, you should be thinking about angles. When you take a picture, what makes it interesting is not if you're just standing there and you take a picture. That's what your eye or the human eye sees every day. That's where angles come into play. Lay down on the ground, climb a tree, go try to capture that action, that rider going off that big feature in a, from a spot or an angle that nobody's ever seen it before. That's what makes everything more dramatic. That's what makes people go, oh wow, that's so cool. It's because it's not natural to them. Not many times do people just lay on the side of the trail and watch riders go by. So angles are super important. And that's how you're gonna set yourself apart from other photographers. And that's the first part of where your style is gonna to start to get developed. Tip number three, that's glass, glass, glass. You can spend all the money in the world on the best pro body you can think of. Sony A3 or a Canon R1 whenever it decides to come out, but that's not gonna instantly take your photos to the next level comes down to the glass. You can put a decent camera body DSLR, like a Rebel T6, which is a little bit of older entry-level DSLR camera, 
into professional photographer's hands. And as long as he has good glass, he's gonna capture great photos and you will too. I cannot stress this one enough. If you're just now investing into your photography setup, the money you need to spend the most on is glass. It will get you the pictures you want much faster than any camera body. Now, a good camera body, especially in the world of the new mirrorless bodies, absolutely makes a difference. With things like IAF, these new autofocus modes, they're going to help you get better photos. But that is all for naught if you don't have good glass. Now the problem with good glass is, is it comes at a very high price. For instance, my 7200 that we've seen on this channel all the time is about a $2,800 lens. If you're just getting started, that's a lot of money and I totally understand that. Show me the money! But you can still get good glass for much cheaper prices. Start off with what everybody calls the Nifty 50. You can get a Canon Nifty 50 1.8 for about three to four hundred bucks and it is a wonderful lens it's super sharp very fast so make sure you're looking at some of the primes and things like that the things you want to pay attention to when you're looking at that good glass is does it have image stabilization and what is the f-stop or the aperture of the lens so good glass beats good camera every time let's do a bonus tip None of anything I have said is ever gonna make a difference if you don't get your camera and just go shoot. Just like riding your bike. You never progress or get better unless you go ride. You've got to practice. Don't be afraid to change your settings. Play with the exposure triangle. See how things adjust or make your pictures different. I can't stress this enough. You're never going to get amazing photos if you don't click the shutter. I hope these tips helped y'all out today. I thank you so much for tuning in once again. Y'all's support has been absolutely fantastic. I do ask, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below for me. Leave me a like, and most importantly, leave me a comment. Do you agree with my tips? Do you disagree? What do you wanna see next? Where was the last amazing place you had tacos? I don't care. This is all about me trying to connect with y'all, and I wanna have discussions, talk to you, get to know you. Hit me up if you're in the DFW area. Let's go for a ride. Till next time, guys. Peace.